Liberty, Ben, can you hear me? Oh, well, well, well. Oh, that's not my line. I'm sorry. That's okay. You can borrow <laughs> it today, dear. <laughs> I know. But Ben's, uh, every time Ben says that, I all I think of is um, Dazed and Confused. Or Beverly Leslie. Oh. <laughs> Oh, true. Well, I thought, well, yeah. well. I oh. thought I smelled gin and regret. <laughs> so, hi, everybody. We're just waiting for the room to fill a little bit uh, before we get, start- get started momentarily. Until then, you can hear our witty pre-show banter. <laughs> yes, and it will be witty because we are full of wit. This is a battle of the wits. Welcome. Oh, hi, Nathan. Hello from Memphis, Tennessee. I don't know the Memphis accent. <laughs> I don't oh, either. My southern accent is just one. It's Nikki Sue Fenn. Uh, <laughs> Nikki Sue Trot with the three yeah, no, no, Nikki Sue Fenn. <laughs> Nikki, Nikki Sue is, uh, she's Georgian, so that's a little bit different than Tennessee. Oh, the right oh. Atlanta. That's right. She's the Atlanta Trots. Oh, yeah, it's the it's Elvis like accent. Elvis. Elvis accent. So Thank did... Question to the pre-show banter room. Did um, Austin Butler do a good um, accent then, a, a good Elvis accent? I mean, it completely changed his voice, so... Yes, yeah. it did. I thought it was good. I thought it was very good. Even though Baz Luhrmann is not my kind of director, the whole film was very good, I thought. Oh, it was amazing. I, yeah. I th- he was so, He's such a dream boat, too. I just... Oh, gosh. Tell me about it. Literally, it could have just been like a still camera just watching him for two hours and I would have been happy. Yes. Yeah. I thought he was excellent. Yeah. And that, you know, it's not that easy to watch a film on the plane, you know, on that mm-hmm. little screen. But um, I had been wanting to watch it for so long. So I was like, I'm just going to do it. And uh, it was still really good, even on that, those with those terrible little headphones and <laughs> being squished up in there like a little sardine. Um, all right. Well, it looks like there's a bunch of people in. Shall, shall we kick off? Yeah, I'm excited to see all of these people here. Hello. Yeah. All right. Hold on. Let me see if I can cue up. Right. Excuse me, but I'm singing in one key and you're singing in another. Poor is the man whose pleasures depend on the permission of Open the door now and, and suffocate. suffocate. Just, Just give me a fan. I don't trust any man who hasn't kissed another man. I'm waiting. All right, people, it's time to get your dancing shoes on. You're listening to MLBC. It's all Madonna, all the time. Welcome to the party, bitches. All right, everybody, you're listening to MLVC, the Madonna podcast, your place for all things Madonna Louise Veronica Ciccone, uh, of course. Hello. Uh, everybody, this is Stefan, and who else do I have with me today? Hi, you guys. Hi, you guys. It's Liberty. I'm happy to be here. Welcome on a Saturday. And it's Ben phoning in and having no gin or regret. Mm. <laughs> Uh, well, hopefully you can hear all of us properly. As as anyone who's listened to the MLVC live shows in the past, the technical difficulties range aplenty here on the Podbean app, but we do our best. It's a, it's a fun... You get to hear us flawed and imperfect on the live shows. There's no editing involved, except in the post. I'll, I'll probably edit. If, if we have major gaffes, I'll, I'll edit. But otherwise, the M's and ah's and er's and ugh's uh, will come up plenty on the live show. Um, how, before we jump in today, Liberty, Ben, how, how are your Saturdays treating you so far? Well, I just woke up, you know, as a dream. From a fuzzy dream? Yes, from a fuzzy dream. Um I, I I don't know. It's just a great cloudy day here in South Texas and a little bit chilly, but not cold. So we'll see what it brings. Are you frozen? No, not frozen. How about you? Are you frozen? Mm-hmm. A little bit. <laughs> <laughs> ben, how, how about you? I am not frozen, but I have been up since 6 a.m. working on tearing a manuscript apart and putting it back together. So oh. I could use that, Jen. Manuscript for what? Uh, one of my poetry manuscripts that I'm trying to get published. Uh, is it about sex? Uh, there's a lot of sex in it, yes. Nice. <laughs> Saucy. Well, and if you're going to get up at 6 a.m. to dismantle anything, a sexy manuscript, <laughs> that's the way to go. Yeah, seriously. 
Well, for everyone who's listening uh, from your corner of the world, thanks for taking the time out of your day. Even if you are at work, we, we, we see you at work, Vanna TM, and don't, don't worry, it's, we've all been there. I, I've, I, I've had massive work issues this past week myself uh, while uh, tr- trying to, let me tell you, trying to work and get Madonna tickets, not a happy marriage. <laughs> Oh, yeah, that's that's rough when you've got a room full of children in front of you and you're like, but kids, just do something really quick. Mama has to get on Ticketmaster. <laughs> yeah, kids, be, the day that I'm buying, I'm going to be. <coughs> <laughs> uh, who, Angela's having a post celebration tour hangover after yesterday. Uh, well, let's let's talk about that for just a second. Um, I had to dig deep in order to, to log on today. I, I sillily said, oh, let's do a live show prior to the disappointment that settled in with the the, t- the ticket debacle on Ticketmaster. Um, I, it is literally impossible to try to get tickets to a Madonna show while you were working a new job. Um, I, I, although Liberty and I have tickets to opening night, for some strange reason, I'm, I'm not elated because one, we're not super close for those tickets. And for Madonna, I always feel like I need to be in like spitting distance of Madonna. Like I want her sweat to fall off her brow onto mine. <laughs> Otherwise I don't feel like I've sort of had the, the right experience. And then two, because it's opening night, Madonna doesn't have a really good track record of successfully opening the opening night show. Yeah. Uh, so I, in my head, I'm like, oh, what if this show doesn't happen? And I currently don't have tickets to any other show. So I'm, you know, and, and Ticketmaster is not, they're, they're not my friend right now because they, they make it very difficult to get tickets. And any of the tickets that are currently available are outrageously priced or for resale. And mm-hmm. it's just awful. Yeah. I, I, it's almost like people are trying to like, like they bought a ticket, right? But they're going to pay off their, their ticket by reselling another one that they got, yeah. which is, you know, like it's thousands. Oh, and also they're going to pay their mortgage for the month. Like it's crazy. Seriously. This, this is why I always tell people, wait, that first week is never worth it. Yeah. Mm. I yeah. I know it's, it's the tickets the week they go. On. I usually buy them like months later. And you fare pretty well with that, Ben? Uh, I was one section above the stage at Palace of Auburn Hills. I, I, wa- I was the winner of a contest for Madison Square Garden, and I was in the pit for reinvention. But then I saw reinvention from, like, the high seats at United Center, because I like to go one show where I'm close, and then one show where I can take in sort of, like, the spectacle and the art direction and the video, because I feel like when you're up close, you don't always see those elements. Yeah, best. true. Let's yeah, see. for sure. Then I, then I had pretty good seats. One other, what show was that? And then I was Golden Triangle for MDNA on that upgrade. And then, bam, my tickets were like at the way top. Rebel Heart I saw from the nosebleeds. But that was fine. They were cheap tickets, and we bought them like two days before we went to the show. Oh, nice. So, yeah, I... I'm totally, I mean, I'm going to go to a couple of shows, one that I want to get somewhat close and one I'm literally willing to see it from like the nosebleeds, Mm -hmm. but I won't, I may try to buy the closed seats next week, but when you get into that queue and it says there are 20,000 people ahead of you, like why bother? Yeah. Cause the people are not, if you wait them out, they all have to drop their prices eventually to unload those tickets. Correct. Yeah. The, so I heard I heard a rumor that a lot of the Ticketmaster employees were the people who were purchasing tickets and are now currently trying to resell those tickets. Absolutely. Um, there's a lot of people out there who have been disappointed by the ticket experience. Taylor Swift fans aside, you know, it happened to me. You know, I, I was in the queue at the right time and the tickets went on sale and I sat in the queue and, and waited and waited. And then it took like five minutes for me to finally get in there. And by the time I got in there, floor seats were pretty much already gone. And there was two open that I clicked on and I literally clicked on them and they just disappeared. And yeah. And I was like, what? How? I don't even understand how this is happening so fast. And before you know it, like literally uh, by the time I got into the queue, tickets were already available for resale. I'm like, how is this possible that it's already 
able to be available for resale. I personally don't think resale should be allowed because if you look at Ticketmaster right now, those New York City shows, half the floor is available for resale. So those are those people just literally trying to gouge non, you know, like vendors. Yeah. It's it's terrible. I just, I just don't feel like it should be allowed, but you just have to wait those people out. Cause if, if everyone would just feel like I'm not buying your overpriced sale tickets, those people will have to unload those tickets like the week before the show for half price. That's Mm. how I always get my seats. Yeah. It's the FOMO. I think that's really gotten to me in the last couple of days. Everyone, everyone posting there, you got them there. And it's honestly, I I hit a low. It was a, it was last night and (laughs) I was watching everyone celebrating that they got their tickets and I didn't. And I, I was, you know, it tumbled me down the rabbit hole of what else is wrong in life. And yeah. uh, And I think, look, it is difficult when you're, when you, when you are in that, like, okay, you're, you've made it through the queue. You're in the position to buy tickets, right? You click on one and within seconds, I mean, not even a second, literally it would just disappear right before my, my eyes, I would click it and it would just click be someone else would click it. It was almost like I'm being traced. Like Mm -hmm. my, my clicks were being, and so I just felt like I had to buy. And, and the worst part of that was, was the price was changing as I was clicking. And I think that that that's the part that I think is like the more people who are in that queue, the more the price seems to drive higher and higher Mm -hmm. for even tickets which aren't in the good section. So Angela just mentioned that about tickets yesterday, how they were going 45 to 90 to 140, And that's called market surge pricing, which is a sort of quiet policy that Ticketmaster and Live Nation employ that the more people who log on, the more expensive the tickets get, which is enough. We need like a massive like Madonna fan Slack account and everybody coordinates when they buy their tickets. <laughs> yeah. So that we yeah. keep the queue low. Like if you log in and there's more than like a hundred people in the queue, log back out to keep the prices low. Uh, it just, yeah. And then you've got the secondary vendors. Like one of my shows that I want to buy, you don't actually buy them through Ticketmaster. You're using SeatGeek, mm-hmm. which is actually one of these ticketing firms that's known to go to Ticketmaster and they buy like huge swaths of the stadium and then resell them at like a 30% markup on SeatGeek. So I don't know how that's going to go. I'm like, are they just going to automatically be 30% higher every seat because they bought out the venue? Like it's right. So far. Yeah. I, I mean, obviously we all know to is the monopoly in the situation. So obviously dismantling the monopoly is the way to go. The fact that it was actually able to happen is why the nightmare continues to exist. But, um, you know, it's, it's a business and I guess that it may be the dynamic ticket pricing and the, the ticket vendors all help the artists in some way, shape or form. Cause I guess Madonna gets a cut of the, you know, the ticket price and, but it's, it's frustrating. It's sad. It's sad to think that there's people out there trying to profit off of, fandom you know like there's legit fans who are sitting in the nosebleed section because that's all they can afford when it's like if we just allowed them to pay the normal ticket price like everybody else they could be sitting on the floor and enjoying a better view from the show so but let us revel for one minute in the fact that so many people like Ugh, madonna they slag her off for three whole years and all of a sudden she's going on tour and selling out selling yeah. out. Correct. What, what was the number? Six, 600,000 tickets in, yes. in less than a couple of hours. I mean, true. Let's, let, let's, let's shift our focus to the, to the happy moment yes. of Madonna 40 years into her career, still able to sell out. I remember I was getting people asking me, do you think Madonna's going to be able to sell those, st- those stadiums out? Well, she did. <laughs> yes. Yeah, and I mean, I'm so excited about that for her because I, I, you know, on the one hand, I've I've sat in sort of worry for like a few years, all of the the vitriol that you see, and now it's almost like it's all happy, it's all happy, and I'm so excited for that. I'm really happy for for Madonna's success, and yes, yes. <laughs> I forgot we had sound effects on the live show. <laughs> Although I don't know how long the sound effects go on for. I, I, can't, I can't control the duration of the sound effects. But, um, but yeah, I, it's true. And uh, 
so Liberty, where you've gotten additional tickets since our, our opening night, right? So I have, yeah, I have Austin also, uh, the first night I was able to secure through the presale. I got a pretty good ticket there. Um, that was kind of my splurge. And then I really was going to say, like, once there was all these other dates announced, I thought, oh, you know what? I'm going to, um, I'm going to try to get a VIP for Austin as well. Um, but then, uh, another friend was like, oh, I really want to, I kind of wanted to go, She's not like the biggest Madonna fan, but she did go to reinvention tour with me. She's my best friend. And so I was like, okay, cool. Well, she's definitely not paying a VIP price. Mm -hmm. So we ended up, I mean, I, and of no pre-sale for iconers for these new added shows, which was very hurtful to me. I, I really took that personally, but that aside. So that's why I was on yesterday with all the other 2000 folk at 10 AM for the Austin. Now I know that 2000 doesn't sound like a lot, but the anxiety for me was super high just because I didn't want to have to pay a lot of money. Mm-hmm. And, um, I was also at work. So I'm like, <laughs> and that's right during a class change. So I have to like manage the children at the same time. I did it though. Cause I'm a super person and I can do pretty much anything in the whole wide world. Yes. Thank you very much. Again, I I can't control the duration of the claps. They just <laughs> you, you, it's just standing ovation. It's okay. Ben, My ha- fans cannot be with Ben, how about you? What you what's your ticket strategy? I I mean, as I said, I'm gonna wait a while. Like I may try to get a closer seat in Cleveland when they go on sale next Friday. I'm not doing any pre-sales i let all my icon stuff lapse ages ago Mm -hmm. um and then i'll probably wait until later in the summer and try for atlanta and maybe um a couple other cities i'm curious to see her in cleveland she hasn't performed there i think since the virgin tour and it's Mm. so close to detroit and pittsburgh that i feel like She's doing this whole line through the Rust Belt that I'm kind of like, oh, what will the demand even be like? Because it'll be so easy for people in this part of the country to go see Madonna this summer. So, yeah, that's my strategy. Nice. Well, um, I wanted to talk less about Ticketmaster debacle. I, I just needed to get it out of the way, mm-hmm. put it put it into the universe. Um and oh, speaking of speaking of attending the show before we, before we move on to the topic of the day, the, I uh, Guy O'Siri had posted on his you know his Instagram yesterday about Madonna selling out and how excited it was you know and come join the party or whatnot. And I, I immediately replied in, in a comment being like, "Hey, Guy O'Siri, I'd love to be your tour correspondent." So again, um, this season. You're, I'm going to be beating a dead horse. You're going to hear me hear me requesting to be the celebration tour correspondent a lot. So I apologize, but um, got to put it out there, right? Gotta, yeah, you got to manifest it. Got to yes. try to make it happen. You know? And <laughs> go put it. You know, everybody go to Guyo Series Instagram and like the comment, so that way he gets <laughs> a lot of notifications. Yes, so that way it happens, mm-hmm. and maybe it'll you know maybe it'll come to fruition. There we go. Exactly. Uh, so let's take a call. I think we have uh, somebody already calling in. Uh, before you call in, I wanted you to all know um, the topic of the day is what are the songs that you would love to hear Madonna sing on the set list? Now, obviously, the show is a greatest hit show. So as much as we all might want to hear her sing has to be the B-side from Ray of Light that is not one of her greatest hits. You all know that. It is not a greatest hit. So greatest hit has to be either a song that went to number one, a song that was included on Immaculate Collection, GHV2, um, Celebration, uh, Finally Enough Love. We better not get Revolver. That's all I got to say. (laughs) (laughs) That... All the, yeah, true. That could that 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 is fair game if it's on a uh, greatest hits. I guess. You're, but so just so y'all know, it those are the parameters from which I believe Madonna would be pulling 
songs from her set list. So it, 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 it shouldn't be anything that wasn't number one or, but I mean, I don't know. What do y'all think? Would, would she be pulling from top five, top 10? Yeah. I mean, that's hard to say. I, I, I don't know. I don't know what where her head's at right now, but right. Um, I don't know because it's always been so mysterious as, as far as yeah, what, what she, she counts. Yeah. Or what she I does think, revere. I think she named it the celebration tour. So I say we, that's our starting point is that. collection. Mm. Okay. Even so much of the imagery that's being used is pre, uh, is everything in the Warner catalog. Mm-hmm. So I say that's the starting point. Yeah. All right. Let's, we're going to go to the calls. We're going to try and get to everybody that we can get to. Um, please know that it's, it, again, it's not a perfect system. Hi, you're on with MLVC. Who's this? Hi, this is Eduardo from LA. Second, we met in New Hello, Eduardo. How are you? Good. Thank you. I'm excited. I just got tickets yesterday. So really. Very in, in, for for Los Angeles, for Los Angeles, yes. Nice, very nice. I've never seen a show in LA. I've always wanted to, but um, I assume it's, it's just crowd. as I, I assume it's just as tough to get tickets there as it is in New York. Oh my God, yes, and expensive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, question for you: what What are like what's the two top songs that you'd want to hear on the set list? Okay, I think I would say our, I love Holiday. It always gets me dancing. So mm-hmm. I'm sure she's going to play that. She's played it the, many times before. Um, and a ballad that I would like to hear finally is uh, This Is My Playground, hopefully. Yes, we were, we were talking about that before we jumped on the air. We were thinking a lot of people seem to really want This Used To Be My Playground. And I'm wondering if we can convince her with social media outreach and comments and whatnot to actually sing that song. Well, I think it'd be a great idea. Cause I think I read that it's this show is going to also honor New York in a way. And it'll be, I mean, if she could sing that ballad and have pictures of her in New York, growing up in New York, making her mm. way up and, mm. you know, and make an homage also to all those people uh, she lost to AIDS maybe and how it was a sad time back then. So. Yeah, I think that didn't like she's she was asked about this used to be my playground in an interview with Keith Caulfield from uh, from Billboard. And she, he asked her about that. And I believe she said that she thought it was too sad of a song to sing in concert. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, but I wonder if enough people wanted to hear that, if she would change her mind. I don't know. I think it'd be a great ballad to hear. We'll I, I agree. I, 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 yeah. I, I agree, too. Um, and this will be the show to hear it. And like, she's giving it to the fans. So. Give us that one gem, please. (laughs) (laughs) Um, The other issue with this used to be my playground might be some of the rights, correct? mm -hmm. Because that's never appeared on an actual Madonna album, has it? And part of that is because of the rights relating to the movie and the soundtrack. I wasn't. No, this used to be my playground was on uh, something to remember. So it it did appear on a greatest hits album of hers. Uh, But true. Again, like when when you see her DVD or her filmed performances from any of the tours or the live albums that come out and a certain song from the set list isn't on there, I assume the reason is because she wasn't able to land the rights to put it either in the tour film or on the, the streaming. So right. She just didn't want to pay the other people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like with, um, what was it? Uh, don't live here anymore for, in uh, Rebel Heart. Right, oh, that was a great moment. I remember it was so it. good, yeah. and and yet it didn't end up in the tour film, and right. we didn't get it on the live album, and that was a, a, a sin because <laughs> when she sang that, people lost their shit. Oh, people went crazy. Yeah, yeah. me included. Was, uh... I guess. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, so how many shows are you seeing, Eduardo? Uh, this will be my seventh show. The first tour I saw was Sticky and Sweet. And yeah. Oh no, I meant how many how many shows of celebration are you going to? Are you just seeing one? So the... so far one, but I want to get tickets to New York. I want to go with the New York crowd. I heard they're amazing. So. Yeah, it's it's a rowdy crew, that's for sure. New yes, York is so. the best place to see Madonna ever. <laughs> uh, well, I've yet to see her in Europe. I, I believe Europe would probably be like London's going to be that the 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 O two those walls are going to be shaking. When oh, she comes south? Out. If she goes uh, south to America. South America. Yeah, yes, I was going to say Brazil. South America. <laughs> and, you know, do we think that she's going to do a second leg in 2024? Totally. And, totally. Yes. You think? I think so. Yeah. Oh, she wouldn't yeah. ignore her South American fans, I don't think. She loves them way too much. 
I mean, to see her in Brazil, I mean, yeah. But um, that well, Eduardo, <laughs> thanks for calling in, Eduardo. I want to try and get to some other callers. Yes. But thank you for taking the time and thanks for listening. Thanks, and thank Eduardo. you all for everything. Thank you. Bye. Yeah. Bye. All right, but now we, uh, now I don't know how to hang up on people. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how to hang up on my friend either. <laughs> He's, he's able to mute. Oh, uh, there we go. Hold on. Got it. Sorry. My assistant's off for the day. Oh. They're, uh... <laughs> <laughs> they're at brunch. Yes. They're, uh, they're having, they're, they're celebrating that they got tickets. Right. And, uh... <laughs> oh, Lord. Those bitches. Um, hi, you're on with MLVC. Who's this? Hey, it's Nathan from Memphis. Nathan, DJ Nathan. How are you? I'm good. It's been a crazy week. So yeah, it's been a hot minute since we've had you on the show. I know. I know. You were what, busy getting married, I think. I, yeah, I did get married over the summer. And, Congrats. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Um, and yeah, so I got uh, this week I scored uh, both nights in Dallas. Uh, I got the mm. first night on Freestyle. And then um, when I saw the second date, I hopped on real quick and got another night. So, uh, yeah, I had a good experience on Ticketmaster. I know a lot of people didn't, so um, but yeah, it all worked out for for me, luckily. Uh, well, see, there you go, people. It sometimes it you just have to try a little hard, and <laughs> it, and it'll happen. Uh, well, so Nathan, once the clapping comes to a close, what song? What two songs do you you have to hear her sing on the set list for the celebration tour? I mean, I would love to see her either open up with um, everybody. I mean, I think it's her 40th anniversary tour and that's where it all started. Mm. Um, or even maybe like a really dramatic version of like a, or like a virgin to start. Um, mm. I'd like to see that. Um, and then, I mean, as far as like a, maybe a newer song hung up, I feel like is a shoe in for the set list. Yeah. Um, but yeah. will it be the original or the hung up with Tokisha? Um, I mean, maybe like a, a, a mashup, like a, like with elements of the new version, I, you know, cause I do like that version, but I, you know, I want to hear that ABBA synth. So, mm-hmm. yeah, we kind of need, I, I need, I think we need a little, well, I don't know. Put, put this out to the whole room and yes, I see all of your comments. We definitely need frozen causing a commotion would be wonderful. Ray of light would be wonderful. Uh, candy shop. If if we don't hear Candy Shop, I will be crestfallen. I, I will I will walk out. I'll be <laughs> shocked if she doesn't do Candy Shop. <laughs> oh my god! I'm gonna put together. A, I'm gonna put like on a T-shirt and just wear it to the show, just just for Candy Shop. And I was gonna say we should just dress up to the opening night as Turkish Delight and like a lollipop. <laughs> That'd be funny. I, I did see on Twitter, I guess she asked, uh, what songs would you like me to perform? And I think the number one uh, response was Rescue Me. Which I know we mm-hmm. Got that in sort of a... Uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah. I, th- I think uh, we were shortchanged on Madame X when we got the Rescue Me interlude. I think people were like, oh, we're going to get her. And then it was just the... <laughs> breathing mm-hmm, interlude and mm-hmm. that was not the well, same that's why that's why we can't specifically ask for the songs we want because if you remember keith caulfield when he interviewed her after the billboard music awards he requested rescue me mm-hmm. and she gave him like this strange look and i thought damn it it'll never be on there and she did the interlude but she didn't sing it yep she had that um on instagram she had like a behind the scenes where they the they were her background singers were singing it which so that gave me hope but then when i saw it live i was like a little disappointed yeah. In fact, we should tell her, don't sing Rescue Me, and exactly. then maybe she'll sing it. Madonna, I... please, one thing you have to do is keep those grills in and don't sing Rescue Me, and then maybe that will... Right. <laughs> <laughs> and whatever you do, do not bring Donna and Nikki with you. <laughs> please. Yeah. Well, so a lot of people... Let's talk about that for just a hot second. A lot of people have been... That's been going around that a lot of people are hoping that she brings Nikki and Donna on. I saw a rumor that maybe Nikki and Donna will be on the tour. I would love to see her reunite with Nikki and Donna on tour again. However, I wonder if Nikki and Donna are in 
the space of wanting to go on tour with Madonna. You know, obviously right. Madonna can offer them a contract and give them some money, but they might not be in the mental space to want to go on tour with her. You know, I mean, that was a huge part of their life. Would they want to relive that? Would they want to go back and revisit that? I, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's hard to say because it is grueling. I mean, I'll look at the schedule and go, how is that going to happen? Especially when I see all of the stages, I think that mm-hmm. looks tiring. Like that looks, I mean, I'm, I'm 45 and I think that looks like, mm, I think I could do maybe one of those concerts. <laughs> and then I'd be like, you know, it's toast. worth noting that they don't currently have any shows booked out in 2023. Mm, Nikki and Donna. That, that's correct. And I just double checked that online. I'm like, hmm, you started talking about that. I'm like, wait a second. Like it says someone put in the chat that they'll be performing together in 2023, but they themselves as a duo, I can't find anything. Mm, interesting. Mm. Yeah. It's that's, uh, I like that we can all play a little bit of detective and just track the movements of some of these other people. And like when obviously Bob, the drag queen canceled, his tour, then we all knew, well, yeah. that's, that's, that's a go. Uh, Nathan question. Um, are your DJ skills for remixing available this year? They always are just ask. All right. Well, cause no, cause Liberty and I have put together a, a new song that I, I think might need your, your house production skills on a remix. Yeah. We'll talk. We can talk about that offline. But yeah. yeah. We'll take it. We'll take it offline. Okay, cool. Uh, before you get w- washed away into the tour circuit, I, I want to make sure that, you know, we, we secure your, your services. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> um, well, thanks for calling in, Nathan. I'm happy that you're going to be able to see so many shows and um, enjoy the rest of your day. What do you have planned for your, your day in Nashville? A little brunch? I'm going to be lazy on my couch today. So nice. Watch a, watch a Madonna tour. Get hyped. <laughs> All right. Thanks, y'all. All right. Bye. Bye, Nathan. All right. Well, let's just keep going, right? Shall we? Uh, yeah, let's let's bring take it. Let's, 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 uh, hi, you're on with MLVC. Who's this? Hi, it's Angela. Hi, guys. How are you? Hi, Angela. Hello, Angela. Hi, Where are you Angela. calling from? For Ladder. In, in, in Florida? Yes, Sunshine State. Oh, mm-hmm. can you send some of that sunshine our way? <laughs> Yeah, yes, really. I will. well, last week was breezy, but right, right now we are in sunshine again. Oh, I, I, I imagine you sitting by the pool drinking an, a cocktail with an umbrella. Oh, yes, resuming the breeze. Oh, yes. uh, sounds lovely. Tropical, the island breeze, <laughs> all of nature, wild and free. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Angela, where are you going to see Madonna? Miami. Nice. Just, just one day because yesterday was I was try for three hours straight, and I couldn't I couldn't purchase for the oh. tent. Darn! So I tried multiple times. Even I tried to call Ticketmaster. They don't answer. There's no chat. It's mm. awful. Wow. Well, there will be contests. You might be able to win some tickets. I hope so. Well, I'm saving my coins. I'm gonna follow Ben's advice. Maybe in the summer, I might be able to get some tickets. Mm-hmm. But I'm saving my coins because I heard rumors that she's going to South America. So let's see. That would be great. Where would you go see her in South America? Well, maybe Brazil. She has a lot of fans over there. Yeah. And Argentina is really too far from me. Maybe Brazil. I would go to see her. Yeah, that would be an epic show for sure. Yes. So tell us, what are your two top songs that you think have to be on the set list? I would say Who's That Girl? Mm. Oh, yes. Nice. Live to Tell. Mm. Yeah, what do we think? What's the likelihood of Live to Tell landing on this? I mean, she's, she's done that song successfully before, and she sings it so well. I don't know that she can top the confessions version of live to tell. Mm -hmm. But who's that girl could be fun if she's having a bunch of drag Queens along and they all come out in her various looks to backup dancers. That could be fun. Oh, we need to be on her creative team. I really seriously. I mean, come on. Uh, That would be fun. I love those suggestions, Angela. That's uh, because she had done. Who's that girl at the very beginning rebel heart tour. And then that song dropped off the set list. Yep. Exactly. 
Yeah. And I mean, even the medley, that little medley changed the one that she had done and that was in the middle of rubble with, um, you know, uh, I think it had everybody in it and dress you up and there were other songs too in that little medley. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know if it, if it, if it's going to make it because it would be really hard live to tell to, to do better or bigger or more profound than was on confessions. Yeah. She likes to make that suffer. She likes, she loves to make that suffer. And she That's true. Be, she might change her ideas last minute, 4 a.m. in the morning, with her rosé on her hand. She will say, mm-mm. <laughs> I want yeah. to change everything. <laughs> That's she true. Us when she said, poor is the man whose pleasures depend on the permission of another. That's right. Yep. That's right. Hey, Angela, I have a question for you. Did you, were you in Fort Lauderdale for the reinvention tour? I was not. No. Oh, okay. Yeah. Cause I, that's where I saw the reinvention tour two nights. What a show. I was, I was 10 years old. Oh my gosh. Okay. <laughs> oh, how cute. See, you could have babysat her Liberty. There you I go. You could've... Well, I would have made sure you went a 10. My goodness. That's yeah. the prime Madonna. Buying indoctrinating age. Madonna. Yes. <laughs> I just love that there are still young Madonna fans. Me too. Love That's so amazing. I love it. I have um I have seen her in, in DNA in Colombia. Oh, oh wow. nice. And I saw her on Rebel Heart Mexico. Well, I was supposed to I didn't purchase the tickets. I purchased the pre-sale and nothing came out. So I was so disappointed. Oh. And then uh, Madame X, I won the contest. And this, nice. will, this, will be, this will be my third Madonna concert, hopefully. Oh, nice. Congratulations. Congrats. That'll be fun. Well, you have to tell us all about it after your first experience. You'll uh, send us a message. Show us a, 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 a selfie of how euphoric you are. Oh yes, I'm. I'm trying now to think how am I going to dress up for that day. And oh, like, exactly. Start brainstorming. You've got a couple months to figure it out. Yes. <laughs> well, Angela, thanks for calling in. We appreciate yeah. you. Did, did, did she hang up already? No, I haven't. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks for calling in. You too, guys. Thank you. All bye. right. Bye. bye. Oh, that's fun. I yeah, I could. Um, I would love to see her in another country. Have you, have either of you ever seen her in another country? Yes, I, I saw haven't. I saw Confessions in Germany. I saw it in New York, and then I moved to Germany. Like, and then I went to see her in Germany. I made my husband wow. come, and that was a totally different. Because when I saw the the Confessions show in New York, it's a smaller venue, obviously MSG, but in Germany it was a stadium. And I mean, I thought that you know, I was really far in in Madison Square Garden. <laughs> but at, at the at the show in Germany, I was I mean, I was probably in like the row from the very top in the very back wow. of the stadium. Yeah. So she was wow. teeny tiny. Yeah. When I saw her at the uh, where was it Yankee Stadium in New York, I was like, I don't even know what I'm looking at. Like I, I could I would have had to have a telescope in order to see her properly. Yeah. It's just crazy. But, you know, that's what I just actually with Angela's call, I just was thinking about that, how back in the day, like reinvention tour, she did not only Miami, but Fort Lauderdale and they're like right next to each other and mm. several shows in each venue, you know? Um, so there was some, in, there was some like drama here this week where it was like, well, Sacramento was on one list that billboard published. And then all of a sudden it's not there anymore on that same article. So somebody like messed up and put sack mm -hmm. on there, but then they took it off. Wishful thinking. I know. And so yeah. there's a lot of disappointed fans who were like, wait a minute, I just bought for San Francisco. I could have waited for sack and is sack going to come out? You know, is, is it going to be added or was that? I don't total... think so. I think, I think, I think U S is done as much as I was hoping that she might be adding Philadelphia. I think those, those, those hopes have been dashed. So, uh, I think, I think you're right. I think if anything, she'll be adding, 2024 um simply because the demand is, is definitely there so definitely there yep. oh, yeah all right let's take another call since i love taking phone calls from listeners that's the point of the the live show yes it is um hi you're on with mlvc who's this hola amigos muchachos hello oh hi hi who, who, who's this up, guys 
Oh, I know who this is. Andrew. Yes, of course. (laughs) Oh, my gosh. I thought we were going to get a Spanish lesson. (laughs) I know. I know. I had to to throw in a little bit of my Espanol there for you guys. Muchas gracias. Well, Andrew. Enchiladas. (laughs) <laughs> Andrew, thank you for taking time out of your busy um, your busy tour schedule. Um, Andrew just released a, a book and a makeup line that he's been busy selling around the country. Um, it's gorgeous makeup. Yes. You should follow Andrew. Um, he'll, wow, he'll make you look he'll make you look beautiful. Thank we you, might need you, to you. we might need to use some of your makeup for the for our tour outfits, Andrew. <laughs> Let's go. I got you. Hair, makeup, fashion. Yeah, wardrobe. eyes, Let's hair, go. mouth, figure, represent. dress, voice, style, image. <laughs> right. I was going to say, are you available um, in July 15th uh, in Vancouver? <laughs> yes, flying to Vancouver. I mean, possibly. <laughs> we can make Andrew, that what's your IG so everybody knows? Oh, yeah. Thank you. It's uh, just Andrew Velasquez underscore. There you go. We're following. I think and we've... Uh, we're following him, but I, I'm trying to think if we've we've posted we, when you yeah, were you on repost. that. Yeah, yeah, we, mm-hmm. we'll repost. We'll repost. Love you guys. So, so Andrew, you. tell us um, what are your two top songs that you think need to be on the set list? Uh, okay, I'm going to be a little dramatic here and uh, pick something random. I'm going to say "You Must Love Me" from Avita as a ballad and. Uh, these, these two I'm torn because one is like La Isla Bonita, hello, that's, you know, it was shot in Echo Park, which is where I live in California. I'm in Florida now, but, uh, so there's that, but then, uh, I love Nothing Really Matters too. So I'm mm. torn between those oh. two. Yeah. So, I don't know. So I have what do you guys think? question to that because now Andrew is the third person who has requested a ballad. And I'm curious <laughs> if people really think Madonna is going to perform very many ballads in this show. I mean, you know, our girl's going to have a little bit of vocal help. So, and that's, I'm fine with that. But I just want the dramatics of it. You know what I mean? The the opening, the entrance, the rage, she being raised on stage, like Avita herself. I don't know. It just would be epic to just see her as a as the queen that we see her. That's fair. I, I, <laughs> I just think that I, I wasn't even thinking in terms of the vocals. I was thinking mostly like, because, you know, she's always complained that that's when everybody gets up to go get a drink. Get the hot, hot dog. dog. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so she rarely, when was the last time she did like an actual yeah, hear show slowed down and she did like a straight up ballad. Possibly well, like a prayer at Super Bowl. But yeah. I mean, that's different. I mean, I think when was, so if, if we're not counting Madam X as, as a like technical stadium tour, cause it wasn't, right. if we're counting the last official, so that would be rebel heart and rebel mm-hmm. heart. What ballads did she sing at rebel? There were a, Quite a few moments where she did do some slowdown. Uh, you know, she down. wasn't she wasn't dancing the whole time. La Vie en Rose, thank you, Nathan. Yes, there, True Blue. There you go. There you go. True blue. Yeah. Yeah. Nathan's I mean, obviously, on, on Confessions, she sat and sang a couple ballads. Uh, she sang Drown World, and yeah, she, she sang, sang uh, obviously uh, Live to Tell, and she also sang Paradise Not for Me. You know, so I think there's definitely a couple moments where she could just sit and sing. Like, uh, it probably, it could be a ballad section, you know? I mean... And it'll be a good opportunity for her to, like, catch her breath and just mm-hmm. kind of, you know, chill a little bit and not be dancing all the Yeah, stage. I mean, the, the show is not going to be nonstop dancing Madonna Blonde Ambition style. It's just, there's no way. I, but I well, her dancers will be. <laughs> yeah, the dancers will be moving. I just, she just doesn't... I'll be, it'll be interesting. It'll be interesting. I'm, I'm kind of nervous for her too. I'm not going to lie. Like I'm so Same. excited, but there's a little part of me that just, you guys know when you, when she starts to just that first vocal or that first dance step, like my heart just drops and I'm already thinking about that now. And it's like, it's not until September. <laughs> yeah, no, for sure. I mean, it's always a little bit, a little bit scary just because in our, because we love her so much, we think of yes. you know we want her to be healthy and safe, but yes. still like blow our minds. <laughs> so yeah, what, she's gonna she be has 65 to find the so yeah. how many shows? Like it's just gonna be 
this is going to be history, man. It's just next yeah. level. Definitely. Another question I agree. related to all of that, everybody, is so we remember from Madam X, we saw all of that rehearsal footage and then she injured herself. And so my question right. is, do we mm-hmm. want to see that footage again? Because I personally exist in terror that she's going to get hurt before the show starts again. Yes. Good yeah. point. I, I, I mean... Look, I hope. Well, obviously, we don't want anything bad to happen to her. No, I hope. Of not. I hope that this is a flawless execution from start to finish. But you know, like with athletes, athletes get injured, and Madonna prepping for a tour is training like an athletic event. You know, and That's you can't. True. You can't. She is bionic in some sections of her body, but you know, <laughs> so, you know, things happen, and and hopefully. They will choose smart choreography. Hopefully, they will choose smart movements. I mean, uh, I mean, God bless. Like, I don't want to see her like doing death-defying feats because of what could happen during training for that. And smart shoes. Yes, no. please. No I mean... six-inch stilettos. Yeah, no more stilettos. I mean, she I want... can still have a thigh-high boot with like a little platform that has oh, yeah. support. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I want I mean, look, ambition booties to come back just with good padding. Yes. yes. Wait, what are yeah. you guys going to dress up as? Are you guys going to pick like a, a era? Are you doing 80s, 90s, 2000s? We're 2010s, still but... workshopping. Liberty and I, I think we're the only two hosts from the show that are actually attending a show together at the moment. Um, gotcha. We're, at the we're, moment. I, think, I think we're planning to do a twinning outfit. I think twinning is always yes. successful at a show. Mm-hmm. But um, I, we might veer away from costume and do more just like mm. maybe like a monochromatic style type of something graphic something you know i like that yeah, yeah well, something that pops i totally yeah like what i'm doing i'm totally i'm gonna shave my head and do the girly show finale mm. oh. that's what i'm you're gonna turn heads ben Mm-hmm. I am. I'm. I've had my curls for a few years, and I'm ready. I'm buzzing my head, and I'm like, I'm you got to do that corset that too. Do what? Ben in a corset that would be corset. hot. That would be hot, Ben. <laughs> you know, my partner Agreed. does burlesque, and he has several. Oh, well, there you go. Corsets, so I, I maybe, but I really want to bring back that early '90s aesthetic with the jean shorts and the boots and the tank top. Uh, yeah, but you wore that every pride, that. every pride I anyway. Do not you hush. <laughs> <laughs> sequin booty shorts ben i mean that's the way no. to go no that's I'm yes not, i'm not doing sequin booty shorts oh, no. again no. <laughs> yeah again missed opportunity i don't know i'm you not gonna be in, repeat myself I you want to be in the fan myself. pit sequin booty shorts and corset i think that's the way to go you know oh, uh, that's the one tour i wish i would have gone to the girly show is oh, yes. my uh. whole time just like I mean, I was a baby, though. I could have gone, but... You should have gone as a baby. (laughs) Totally. (laughs) Yeah, I tried to go to Girly Show in Philly, and I couldn't get tickets. I, I, tried. I was too young. I, I mean, I was I was in high school, but I didn't even know about it till it was right. probably on no, already I was, sold I was out. Well into my twenties, so. mm, I I tried to go to Girly Show with a friend during college, and we bought scalper tickets that were fake, and we couldn't get in. Oh, what a bummer! Imagine that sixty five. Uh, imagine that sixty five dollars was an outrageous price for a Madonna ticket back then. Right. That I was like, good. I was crying on the Long Island Railroad train back to college. I was like, I can't believe we spent sixty five dollars and we didn't get in. <laughs> sixty five dollars. I'd 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 pay three times sixty five dollars to go to. Madonna. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I, I secured one for Tampa, but I'm holding out to uh, to uh, get Ben's. Well, listen to Ben's advice and get a little closer, uh, possibly like New York, Miami, or mm-hmm. maybe even LA. We'll see. Uh, it's been working for me for twenty some years. Uh, I, yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, Andrew, thanks for so calling in. Advice. It's always lovely to hear your voice. Thank you, guys. Love you. Love you. Bye. 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 <laughs> Where is that from? Is that a Real Housewife thing? Bye. I, I don't know. Is that Kardashian? I feel I, I, I think it's probably social media. Bye. Yeah. I, Bye. Hear, I hear that all the time, and I'm like, where did that start? Oh, I don't know. The kids at work say it all the time. Oh, RuPaul, RuPaul's Drag Race. Andrew says that's funny. Oh, okay. Alaska. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, <laughs> let's take another call. We still got some time, right? 
Yeah. We'll hang in for we'll hang in for a couple more minutes. We we're do. getting I to have the one thing to bring up before we end that I just realized, but we can do that after the next call. Okay. We'll bring it up now while we're waiting. Oh, okay. Well, did we totally forgot that this weekend is the 30th anniversary of Body of Evidence? <gasps> oh. Everybody needs to go watch Body of Evidence tonight. I was going to say, climb on a to- climb on a car with broken glass, melt some <laughs> melt some wax on your body, melt some yeah. wax on your lover, slapped get slapped by Julianne Moore in a bathroom, and call <laughs> it a weekend. <laughs> That's the part I want. I want Julianne Moore to come in and slap me. Oh my God! Let me tell you, I have passed by Julianne Moore in New York City more times than I can count on a hand. And uh, it's crazy. I don't know why. In fact, the one time I was telling a friend, oh my God, I I, I passed by Julianne Moore one time when I was walking in the West Village. And my friend was like, Stefan, look, it was Julianne Moore walking down the street. I'm like, oh my God, I was just talking about this. And I passed her. It's just crazy. I don't know why I passed her so many times. But the last time I passed her, I had to hold my tongue because I was like, Stefan, don't say anything about body of evidence. <laughs> Don't her because... ask her to wish you luck. Yeah. <laughs> Cause I was like, she's going to think you're just a lunatic. It was the same thing. When I passed by Laurie Metcalf, she was doing a Broadway show and I passed by Laurie Metcalf and all I wanted to do was walk up and be like, so take a volume like a normal person and then just storm <laughs> off. And I, I just, I oh didn't my have God. my time because I always think I'm like, what if I end up like, in a professional environment with these people at one time. And they're like, that's the crazy guy that screamed at me on the street. And then it just, it's over. So I, I hold my tongue. Unfortunate. More celebrities and actors need to embrace the camp elements of their past, especially because it all lives forever on the internet and they'll never keep it even with death. So just yeah, yeah. it. Yep. Um, all right. Hold on. I had invited somebody to come on and they're not accepting my invitation. So we're going somewhere else. Uh, hello. You're on with MLVC. Who's this? Hey, it's Ahmed. Oh, hello, Ahmed. our Canadian yeah. correspondent. <laughs> yes, sir. You know it. <laughs> <laughs> Are you preparing Vancouver for Liberty and I's arrival? I- I'm literally going, rolling on the red carpet, cleaning the city, making sure everything's a okay. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you. Perfect. Uh, well, uh, I'm at. Tell us where you're seeing Madonna. Okay. So far, I have uh, one night for Toronto. I'm hoping to get the second night too. Then I'm doing one night in Montreal, and then Amsterdam too. So. Oh, wow. Wow. Europe. You're gonna yes. smoke smoke in a hashish b- bar and then pop up <laughs> some Madonna. No, I need to be all sober for Madonna. Not nothing. <laughs> Nothing keeping me between me and Madonna. Well, can I put that out to to everybody? Even before I stopped drinking, which is almost 12 years ago now, I would never drink at a Madonna show because I wanted to be completely coherent and let Madonna be the drug. Did anybody else ever do that? Uh, Or do people just go and get shit-faced? I was the exact same way until Madam X. And I will admit I downed two glasses of champagne before Madam X because that was the only way I was going to get through that three hour wait for the show. To <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> but otherwise I have never drank seeing Madonna. I just can't even imagine. And I, when I saw her in golden triangle for MDNA, like the show started so late, like about 10 people got so drunk. They passed out. <gasps> Dirty had to come and carry them out of golden triangle. Oh no. And so then the live nation people went up and brought fresh meat down from the stands into the triangle. And they were like, how did we get in here? And we were like, uh, because that group of ladies that they just carried out on a stretcher got so drunk. They oh my out. gosh. Can you imagine Oh, how horrible would that be? That happened. We were, my friend Sean and I, we were runway bitches at the first Rebel Heart show in Philadelphia. And the guy behind us got so drunk before the show started, he could barely stand up by the time she came out. And I'm thinking, why the hell would you pay hundreds of dollars, get shit faced and not remember seeing Madonna? Like that just seems like such a foolish thing to do. Right. I remember every second of every time I've seen her, like it just happened yesterday. I cannot mm-hmm. imagine the impairment situation at all. It's, I know. That's crazy. Uh, I'm at what, what are your two top songs that you think have to be on the set list? Well, that's a hard one, but given I'm assuming she's doing all the big hits. So I'm going to go, I'm going to say something like, sorry, maybe cause we didn't see it 
since confession. Mm-hmm. And maybe something like I second nothing really matters or um or keep it together. Maybe something like that. Ooh, would be fun. a little old school. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I would love so if Nikki and Donna do end up on the show with her, nothing really matters has to happen. Oh, because yeah. Because yeah. hearing Nikki do the background of nothing really matters would be amazing. Oh, I'd love that. I think actually that will shape the set list a lot. Is mm-hmm. does she have the backup singers from Madam X that she seemed to really like, or do Donna and Nikki come back for the hits? Yeah. I, if 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 she brought them back, I mean, as we all know, that was like a little girl group time for Madonna. She loved, I think she loved having them with her. You know, they were always so front and center. And, and I, uh, after Nikki and Donna left, it shaped, it affected how Madonna performed. You know, she stopped performing really with the background singers. And I, I wonder if she was to bring them back, if she would be more front and center with them. Oh, yeah. I think certain songs like Rain and Nothing Really Matters and, uh, oh my God, I just went blank. The, some of the songs will have a better chance of making it if Donna and Nikki are there versus, yeah. you know, like a good example would be This Used to Be My Playground. If she's got Nikki and Donna, it's more likely that she's going to do a different ballad than that. Yeah. So yeah. I think that'll have a lot of influence on the set list. Yeah, true. I also wonder, do you think Jose Extravaganza is going to, since she had him in Pride and she had she's having Bob the drag queen as well, I feel like maybe there's going to be an element or two from the Pride performance. I think yeah. the Pride performance is the template for the tour. Yeah, I yeah. do too. I yeah, I think what we saw at the Pride performance was her dress rehearsal for what the show is going to be like. So yeah. with all of those drag queens doing actual numbers from the show, I think that's going to be our interludes. You know, instead yeah. of just instead of just background dancers doing dances, I think you're going to see drag queen performers performing some of the big songs. And that, you know, she'll then pop up after that. Um, I don't know what Bob the Drag Queen, I think he's, He's MC, so is he like? I don't remember really what he was doing at the the Pride performance, but it's I guess he's introducing the songs. Well, maybe he's gonna play like maybe there'll be like you know, it's a it's a, a wacky idea I'm having, but perhaps there's sort of this storytelling element to mm-hmm. the show where he's sort of like the narrator. Out laying out a framework. What was it like early eighties? What was it like mid uh, to late eighties? What was it like ninety? You know, I mean, there's a way to do that where you break it up into sections like she often does. She's always got sort of sections, right. Mm -hmm. Um, And a story can be told through what her, through her muse. I think she's always kind of been fascinated with that. I not with her own story, but with other stories where she wants to tell a story through, through the music. She mm-hmm. had what was that Hello Suckers music, right? Movie? Yeah, right, and right. Uh, a few others that she was sort of thing with. So she yeah. could do that with her own story, you know. Of course, yeah, and uh, it would be um, kind of fun. Somebody mentioned Bob does do stand up, but I posted the link to the Pride show. I wouldn't be so people can go watch that if they haven't seen it for the way it's structured and how Bob kind of MCs it. I also wouldn't be surprised, and I definitely have been reaching out to people that I that I know through my partner. Um, like if more drag queens end up becoming part of the the tour company, mm-hmm. I definitely think she's going to have a a, a a a crew of drag queens on the show. Yep, yep. I'd love yeah, that. I do too. Yeah, which I bet. I wonder then if our former guest Corvette will have a little bit of an opportunity to work with Madonna again, that would be great. For I me. think Corvette's definitely going back on the tour. He hasn't, I, I haven't asked him directly, but he probably will. He probably can't say anything. Yeah, probably <laughs> not, but that's great. I mean, it's so, you exciting. know, those NDAs, she loves to, uh, she <laughs> loves to have an NDA out. Yeah, uh, Angela. So totally. I hope, hope our crew's listening and taking some notes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, Ahmet, thanks for joining us again. It's wonderful to hear your voice. It's been, a, it's been, it's been a little bit. Well, thanks for having me. I'm yeah, and we'll have you. We'll have you back again. I'm sure at some point. Oh yeah, for sure. Pr- you praying for new music now. Praying <laughs> new music, right? Oh my God! Please give me that sick uh, clip. 
soon. I'm, I'm dying. <laughs> Enjoy the rest of your weekend. All right. All right. Bye. Talk to you later. Bye. 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 Do we think she's going to do a full album or just put out maybe like a new greatest hits version with new songs on it? Yeah. I mean, look, I, I look, part of the fun of this podcast is being able to theorize vocally with other people such as yourselves. Oh. And I, I think we've theorized, Oh, maybe she'll release re-release finally enough love with new music. Maybe she'll release an EP of the hung up and frozen remixes with new music. Um, I mean, we've also, people have been theorizing that maybe it's a full album of collaborations. I think we've done, we've chatted about that offline where people have been talking, uh, you know, she did collaborations with, Arca, you know, Erica Badu, Tokisha, That's you know, like right. all the people have seen her with last year out and about. Did she do collaborations with them? I heard on very good authority that before she went to Africa, she was spending a lot of time in the studio with Mike Dean. Now, I don't believe Mike Dean was producing, but I think Mike Dean was definitely, he, you know, mastering stuff like he did for uh, finally enough love and for Madam X. So she spent a lot of time in the studio working on music. I heard now I do believe some of the music was probably stuff like tour demos, but it's probably also new music. So and hopefully I that's all, you, hopefully it's all coming. How much my brain would explode if she does something with Arca. Oh my God. I can't even, <laughs> I would love to hear that. Yeah. I just feel like, you know, there's, I mean, obviously we've seen so many different little snippets here and we've all sort of contemplated like, why is that person hanging out with Madonna now? And to know that there could be something cooking that we have just had no inkling about for all this time. And then a boom, a surprise drop. I don't know if there's room for a full album because there's sort of some conceptual um, promo she has to do usually for that. But right now it's just the tour, a couple, like a new song to sort of be like, oh, you know, going, I'm going to do South America and here's my new two songs or three songs on an EP or something. Yeah. I mean, had dancer auditions yet that none of that's hit the trades that we know of. Well, right. She could be asking people that she already had in the pride show. You know, it could just be like invitations. So we shall see. I don't know. It's, um. Yeah, it, there's so much to think about and consider and, and hope and pray for. Um, what What do you think? Shall we? Do you want to take one more phone call, kids? Let's yeah. take one more. Why one not? more, and we'll well one will let's. I'm just gonna randomly pull it, pick somebody. Hello. Maybe they're not. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I thought they were, and now they're not. All right, let's. Can see. you hear me? Yes, yes. Ooh, ooh. Oh, yeah. Hi, oh, hi, hi. Hi, okay. who's this? Well, now we got two callers live. <laughs> Sorry, I, we... I just, I, down, I downloaded the pod, the, uh, pod beam and I didn't realize I had to access my, my uh, microphone. Oh, that's okay. Yes, we do have two callers. So, sorry, who's so first? Who's the first caller? Ron Rad? Yes. Is Ron Rad really your name or is that a, a stage name? <laughs> no, it's Ron Redvinsky. I'm one of the founding members of Icon. Oh, hello. Oh, I was like, that name sounds hello. familiar. <laughs> hello, hello, hello. Wow, a, a so luminary on the show. Yes, uh, I, was, and so, I was one of the founding members. Oh, that's awesome. And so uh, who's our second caller? We have somebody else on the line as well. I think it's me. This is Chris in Minneapolis. How are you? Oh, how are you hello, Stephanie? Chris. Yeah. How are you? <laughs> I'm good. I, I was getting uh, Ticketmaster vibes. I've been on hold for a while, so I thought you'd <laughs> re- recreate Sorry. your 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 stress. I'm just kidding. We, we we do what we can to get through as many calls as we, as, <laughs> no, as possible. For sure. um, <laughs> So let's, sorry, we we didn't mean to have two people on at the same time. We we try to give people their undivided attention. Um, My bad. Ron, Ron, thanks for joining us. I want to ask you, um, what shows are you seeing? Are you seeing shows? I'm going to go to Los Angeles. Nice. And um, what are your two topics for on the set list if if you had if you if you, if she asked you what songs you wanted to sing what are the two top favorites she she has to do hey you because that's just a brilliant song i'm kidding i'm oh kidding God. stop I'm kidding. it no 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 
No, of course, of course, you know, Rescue Me is the one that everybody wants to hear. Yes. Rescue Me. I would love to uh, revisit Causing a Commotion. Um, mm. We haven't heard that in a really, really, really long time. And of course, Physical Attraction would be fun. Uh, oh, yes. Physical Attraction would be amazing. I would literally yeah. die if she did Physical Attraction. See, Same. That's, a, that's a song she needs to do, like do a Takesha hung up style, like find somebody that she can do a duet with physical attraction and bring it into the 21st century. Like that would be super interesting. Agreed. Oh, I, I think agree. Ron, since you're on, the, Oh, I think we lost Chris. Sorry, Chris. I have put you on mute because your dog was barking and I, I think, I think maybe, maybe your doggy hung up on you. Um, <laughs> It's okay. No worries, Chris. I see you in the comments. Uh, so, Ron, since you're on the phone, so give us a little insight. Sure. So you were running the Icon Fan Club? I was not running the Icon Fan Club. I was the one of the founding members. So it's, it's, that, that's a whole other story. But basically, I was there um, when Marsha and Rob Del Vecchio started the fan club. And I was in the first few issues of Like a Fanzine and the first issue of Icon and and at one point I was the mail coordinator and I received all of Madonna's fan mail. And one of my jobs was to basically, um, send or help send, uh, uh, fan club membership applications to people. So I had Fun. thousands of letters in my house that were all addressed to Madonna. So did you ever read those? Because I'm sure yes, they were I ab- full ab- of, <laughs> I absolutely read, I, I absolutely read, all, I, I, I read the letters and, um, for the most part, they were, we love you, Madonna. We love you. Um, <laughs> we love Madonna. Uh-uh, we uh-huh. love Madonna. Uh-uh. <laughs> but I will say that there was, at one point, one letter um, got to me that was like a death threat. Oh, wow. And it was really severe of uh, how many, this one person wanted to do terrible things to her. And I read it, and I just started bawling. Oh, no. And, um, and then we eventually had to turn that into her security. But, um, yeah, I mean, it was it was it was pretty descriptive of all of the terrible things he wanted to do to her. And I'm like, how? Did, why is this in my house? How did I get this? Right. It's oh, that's just crazy. So sad. But now that's shifted from personal writing of the letter to just post it on, you know, <laughs> right? Oh, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. But yeah, no. Um, w- like I said, it was there when the fan club first began, and um, there's a lot of history there. But it was it was such a great experience. I was very young, and it was it was a lot of fun. That sounds so. like it would be an amazing book. I have to say, like, oh. like <laughs> something in there. There's got to be, you know, a good little, a good little couple of stories that people would be like really surprised to learn. But oh, absolutely. What were what were some of your highlight perks of, or experiences that you had while you were working or a member with Icon? Uh, I would say. Basically, when the fan club went from the the like a fan club to the original Madonna fan to the the official Madonna fan club, the access to Madonna completely changed, and suddenly there were a lot more correspondences with Liz Rosenberg. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if you guys remember the the fan club, but they used to have like these stamped autographed photos. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and um, basically those were very legitimate and. Um, uh, Marsha, who has since passed away, she actually, she and her husband were invited to Madonna's house to sign those, to, to basically sign a sheet that had um, like six autographs. And you can actually find that image online because Rob was sold it at one point. But she got there and she just, they gave her a Sharpie and, her, and, and she signed six boxes that had, you know, all my love Madonna, all the best Madonna, love Madonna. And then those were used as, um, uh, like I said, stamps for the photographs. They took those autographs. They used them in the letters that were sent to Icon members by Madonna. So it was it was really it was cool. Wow. And then I saw um, I got to see a lot of the Truth or Dare images before anybody else. So mm. um, like the picture that said you know when she had all access written on her back. Mm-hmm. Right, right. Oh. Yeah, love that and shot. Then she had her fing- and then she had her fingers on her face. You know, kind of like kind of creating that little mask with yes. long hair. Oh yeah. 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 So had access to those things beforehand. So that was a lot of fun. Oh, that's amazing. Wow. Yeah. Did you ever get to meet her in person? I 
did because I worked on Dangerous Game. So I was a production. Oh, my attorney. God. Okay, Ron, we're going to have to have you on the show sometime. It I mean, this, also, this, <laughs> this deserves a full episode. I, I think ha- so. Have we not arranged this already? I reached out to you a long time ago and told you I was, and, and you, you didn't really respond. So. <laughs> Uh oh. So in my in dun, my dun, dun. in my defense, I like Madonna receive a lot of fan mail, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it I don't have somebody to go through all of my my letters for me. So I apologize no. if that got buried in the uh, in, in in my messages. I apologize. <laughs> Must have been your assistant all, again. All good. No, I'm so, happy to share. So I had a lot of stories. Yeah. Were you able to attend that recent event about Dangerous Game that they had in New York with the director and writer? No, because I'm based in Los Angeles. Oh, okay. Mm. That was a very interesting event to watch on YouTube. I was like, oh, this is okay. <laughs> yeah, no, it's there there are a lot of fun stories, but I will say that being a production intern on Dangerous Game was such a highlight. And the biggest highlight um was being able to go to the rap party. And oh. um I danced next to Madonna as we listened to Erotica with Ingrid sitting right there. Oh my god! Fun. Yeah, Stefan, you need to book this episode. Yeah, we're gonna. Oh. Ron, message me again so I have it at the top of my top of my inbox, and we will we will we will make that happen this season for sure. Mm-hmm. That'll oh, be fun. Deep Lots dive. of fun. Um, but I'm so glad that you chose me as a caller. And uh, again, I apologize for the um, the issue with the with the microphone. But I love oh, your no, worries, no worries. Really, you guys are the best. And um, so excited that we get to explore another Madonna tour together and just enjoy the excitement. And as you said, all the theorizing, it's just going to be great. I'm, I have such high expectations. As do we all, I think, uh, right? For, I think for sure. Yeah. But you know what? It's also just about, Oh, just, just being with all the Madonna love together. That, mm-hmm. Absolutely. That was something we kind of didn't get as much of with Madam X as you do with the bigger shows. And there, there is an energy and a life force that I think we all take from that, that just other people will never understand. Yeah. For sure. It's true. Yeah. Yeah. The energy was different in the Madam X venues than it was in a stadium venue. I don't know why, but it's no well, first of all, we, well, we, first of all, we couldn't breathe because it was so freaking hot. Um, <laughs> but it's the but, sound that we make in unison and project to the stage and then it bounces back and we're all awash in it. There's something almost like quasi religious and spiritual about it. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Let it, let it wash all over me. Absolutely. Over uh, me. <laughs> But I, I do think, version of, uh, <laughs> but I think a lot of that had to do with the fact that we were in a theater that it was not designed to be, you know, it was, it was obviously supposed to be more intimate, yes. but in, in, in a, in a stadium and arena, you really do have that freedom to, to let go. And, you know, I, I'm sure like a lot of people, I don't, I don't watch sports, but going to a Madonna concert is my Super Bowl. Amen. So and it's, Absolutely. It's at that moment, at that moment, it's like, bring it, just let us, dance and sing get up or do anything let's just really enjoy ourselves and that's when you get to really unite with people (laughs) amen but it is it's it's the ultimate it's the ultimate event well on that note ron i i I think you you, you've sealed the deal you're you're coming on this season at some point we will make this happen can't wait thanks thanks for calling in i appreciate it we'll uh, we'll talk to you soon you're very welcome have a great day guys and thank you so much for everything you do and uh final note I think Guy Siri absolutely needs to hire all of you to be tour correspondents and just promote the hell out of the show. Uh, exactly. Yes. I, I, we need, I don't know how we need to make this happen, but you know, from your lips to Dita's whip. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys have a wonderful day. Thanks. You too. I'm here all day, folks. I know. Oh, Ben, you're, you're a good one. You've been saving that one for a while. Ben. I have. I'm not going to lie, Liberty. I've had that one in my pocket for about two months. <laughs> that is so good, though. I love it. I love it. All right. Well, I think we've had a, a good, healthy chat today. I think it's it was great to talk to all of you. I think it was good to sort of get a little bit of that Ticketmaster funk out and about and get it over with, but, um, yeah, for sure. And I mean, look, as I mentioned to you, you know, out through our various little texts and stuff, you will, you will have success. There will be, you know, I, I know it's just so hard to see through the feeling of, I really want to 
be there and it looks like everybody's taking all the good seats so I'm not going <laughs> to get one and it's not fair or it's not right and we're you know we just we're putting that good energy out for all of the fans who really want to be able to see this show don't worry Ticketmaster is full of thieves but we are the positive <laughs> force in the world and we're going you're going to get your seats I promise you Amen Yeah everybody just needs to center themselves and have a little patience with the two. A little, a little Om Shanti. It mm-hmm. always will work out. Yeah. Your, your shelter Raga. from the storm. <laughs> well, but like she told us, we want the good life, but it's not an easy ride. That's right. Mm-hmm. It is not. Yeah. Exactly. There are multiple Madonna songs that we can use to keep solace in while we wait, you know. It's And it's only half the battle getting the tickets because after that you have to start getting show ready, which means mm. a lot of... A lot Dermatology of appointments. Mm-hmm. I mean, a I'm already of planning. Already Botox, planning. Botox, a lot mm-hmm. of, you know... You know, at Liberty and I, twinning, Liberty, we're going to have to... Waxing, thank you. Exactly. <laughs> I need a full, a full, full body wax, a little, you know, a little, some lipo, maybe some (laughs) both. A BBL 360. I mean. Y'all are too much. I'm not doing any of that. (laughs) You don't need to, Ben. Yeah, seriously, Ben, your body's already plump and vivacious. Lord. Well, that takes work, but still. Can I have to, I need a body spank. Oh my God. Ooh. Ooh. No, you know, like Spank. <laughs> oh, it. oh, I was like, mm, I'm Hanky, Spank. Hanky. It's yeah, Kevin Spank. I move on from Dita's whip. So. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, it is early on a Saturday to get Hanky Panky up in here, but okay. Never, <laughs> never early, early, never too early for that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, kids. Well, uh, let's put. Oh, it's the old it's the old outro music. I was like, what, what outro music do I have in here? Um, Remember, you can find us on Instagram at MLVC Podcast. If you'd like to donate to the show, we're on Venmo, MLVC Podcast. Think about becoming a subscriber on Patreon, patreon.podbean.com forward slash MLVC Podcast. We love all of you. Thank you for listening to the show and being the people that you are. We can't wait to see you, hopefully, at some of the shows coming up this year. If we're at the same venue, make sure you say hi to us and uh, share your experiences in person. Liberty, Ben, thank you for joining today. My thank pleasure. You for me. And uh, w- we, will, we will hear from all of you guys again soon. I just want to say thank you to all of my fans for all of your love and support. Over the last few days, I don't take any of this for granted. I feel like the luckiest girl in the world. And I'm so grateful for all of your support. And I can't wait to put the show together and have a moment with each and every one of you on the stage to celebrate the last four decades of my journey. And I'm... I don't take any of this for granted. Yeah, thank you.